Ron Cairns. I'm a local historian and I'm here to bring you museums from Northern Alberta. We're here in Westlock, Alberta at the Canadian Tractor Museum. Okay, we're going down here. John Deere row, obviously. John Deere green. Cases. In front of you is Massey Harrison. A case diesel. More John Deere's because John Deere's are the tractor to be using unless you're talking to a case guy. A case or an Oliver are also very common tractors. These are many different models of John Deere's and cases. This has got a conventional front end. Um, we've got a row cropper on the front end up here. This is a row copper row cropper front axle and it's the tires are slanted in and is meant to go in between the rows the outside wheels are fit in between the furrows this is a john deere with steel wheels on it steel wheels are an interesting fact they've got bolt-on lugs so the coarser the ground is the more lugs you bolt on Lugs rip up the top of the ground, so they're not good if you're driving over seated. The front axle, you'll notice the front wheels have an extra ridge on them. This is for very soft soil to allow the tractor to maintain directional control. I'm here at the Waterloo tra exhibit. This is a kerosene fueled tractor. Kerosene was used as a fuel because it was cheap, readily available, when other fuels like gasoline and diesel were not available. The Waterloo Boy was manufactured up until about 1917, when it was taken over by another major tractor company. We're in front of the 1910 Vesmer hit mess engine. This is a very neat engine, a very large piston, very long stroke. It's driving two heavy flywheels that are connected to a takeoff pulley on the, other, on the other side. This pulley is used to drive a, a threshing machine or a grinder or a flour mill or whatever machinery the farmers need. This engine is has a big water cooled hopper at the back that's used to cool the cylinder by gravity. The exhaust comes out the top right here through this pipe. The intake is through here and that goes back to an, an evaporator. It's mounted on a trailer here but it's not usually mounted on a wagon wheel trailer because this is 1800s 1890s, and this particular one, 1910. Trailers like this were very expensive. This trailer is used to haul this engine from show to show to show off that it does actually work and it does create a lot of noise and a lot of power. This flywheel is has a split hub and it's held together with four very large bolts. It squeezes down on the axle shaft and is held by a key. It's located by a key, but these four large bolts are squeezing the two halves together tightly onto the shaft so it can transmit large amounts of power. This is the water tank that's used to cool the engine. And as you can see from the sign, it's a 40 horsepower engine. 12 inch stroke, that's guess around 800 millimeters. It's a very large bore, an 18 inch stroke. That's huge. It also operates only at 180 RPM. 180 RPM is really slow for a combustion engine. But because of the weight of the flywheels, and the big bore and stroke, the engine can't idle down that, that low. We're at the Bessemer stationary engine. 
This engine has an auxiliary starting tank. This tank is filled with compressed air and it's used to start the piston moving down the cylinder. Get the flywheels rotating so they have the momentum to carry it over for the first combustion cycle. The air tank is very necessary to do this. Some engines use cartridges, for like for rifles and mostly shotguns. They would use a shotgun charge to get the flywheels moving but this one uses compressed air. I really enjoyed showing you all the wonderful things, the engines, the tractors, the mach machinery here at the West Sox Tractor Museum, and I encourage you to visit, and I look forward to bringing you more exciting videos from museums in Alberta.